Hi, Jerome right here, and once again you're joining. Hello, everybody. Jerome right here, and once again you're joining me on my Jerome Wright channel here on YouTube. All right. Um, in this video, I'm gonna be going ahead and um, I'm gonna share through my paranormal experience and encounter my interpretation of what happened in the U.S. UFO reported incident um, with um, Roswell back in 1940. Um, I've been thinking about this over and over and over again. And I have been given, through my thoughts, this image of what actually occurred in Roswell and why this UFO, um, which is actually was confirmed first by the United States Air Force and by eye account witnesses about these, about a flying type object, which was a UFO um, and um, these aliens and what was possibly um, there. And I've been thinking about this over and over again for some time and all, and I believe that I will, I'm, what I'm about, about to disclose will be the, probably the most compelling and most believable account of what actually occurred within Roswell than any have been given to date. And this is my consistent pattern of being able to do these types of, um, these types of videos. Okay. Now, what do I believe happened? there in, um, in Roswell. Well, through my paranormal um, experience and encounter, I believe that what landed in Roswell, okay, because it was confirmed that something was there, even the, even the United, um, United States Air Force states that something was there. So therefore, there was something there that came in, that flew in, and it crash landed, okay? Of course, um, the the Air Force redacted this story, but that's that's of no moment when once you hear my story, everything is going to come into place and make sense. I believe what crash landed in Roswell in New Mexico was not a identified well, it was an identified flying object to most people, but not to after I believe what it was to be totally honest was a time machine. That's what I believe. Where do I get this from? Well, when it crashed, this object crashed, it was unknown to U.S. officials that went onto the site. But after they did their, um, upon first seeing this, they, 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 they looked at it as what it was, a UFO. But upon closer inspection, they realized that this was an object that came from our world, but from a different time. And this is why they redacted their story. Because had they would have had released this story, because if it was a UFO, they would rather have you known that it was a UFO when it came from somewhere else than um, and, 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 and to report on this story as they first did, than to take and say, no, no. But what happened it was that this object was an object that came from our world and in the form of a time machine. And the reason why they could not release that information to us because it would go against everything that we were already previously taught to believe which was in religion um and how mankind believed um where, where we came from this what they actually and 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 the time of events which actually occurred here in our world if you guys are following me i'll put more in writing as well too but it was a time machine now as we all know there was a foil-like substance. This is this is tin for uh, aluminum foil, Reynolds wrap, that was actually associated with the object that was found with the with the debris field. Okay, right after that, NASA began using utilizing this type of tin foil on its deep space probes. It's my position that they knew that our ancestors sent a object into space like NASA is doing now. Now, in this, what I believe in is happening right now, that the materials and all that NASA has utilized, that's going to deep space. Their deep space probes have the consistent material, this metal wrap type thing, on the fins of these deep space probes. It's my position that these deep space probes when they leave Earth's atmospheric glarings and go in either direction in space, here's deep space here, outside here, leaving and going, it leaves, let's say Earth is here, well, hold on, I have, Earth is here, there, when you leave, 
we're going out into the future. All right, these objects uh, which leave from any given place here within the closer rings to that of the sun in the orbit with the sun, you're going into the future. So that object, and that's a deep space probe, automatically, once it leaves our world and, and travels away from our world, it becomes a time machine because it's going into the future. It's my position that these, these flights that NASA are making, now keep in mind with me that NASA has sent out uh, its probe. It put in objects, which included a golden disk and other relics they put inside to identify and associate these things with Earth. In one other scenario that this takes place, think about it. Those time capsules that people bury in grounds around our planet, for people to find in, in the future, there I just seen where they dug up one um, um, recently um, with regards to a, a, a um, to a mouse, a famous person, one of the first mouse that was made, a computer mouse, and um, the guy put it in there and he passed away and they went and dug it up. So these time capsules are in our world with these relics. So just imagine that NASA is doing the same exact identical thing, but instead, instead not with on our world, but with space. NASA knows that that Roswell crash incident was actually an object, a time capsule that was sent into space, into the future. And it was when it returned to Earth, it gave NASA and NASA officials, the U.S. officials, something to go by. And this is why there was a boom in technology after that object returned. Now, let's imagine, let's fast forward. All life forms on Earth now, we're in, the, uh, we're in a future where life on Earth has, for whatever reason, become extinct. And then there's another cycle. There's cycles of life going on on our planet that I believe that where there's a gap. And where, it, where this gap is at is caused by extinction. So let's just say that NASA knows all of this, which I'm saying that it does. They send these time capsules into space, these deep space probes has this Earth information, recordings, of who we are, not just in visual, they have it in a visual sense, recorded sense, and all senses that we could possibly ever get this information. And on top of that, we don't know what's in these capsules. So let's just say that they put in these jars, let's just say, for the, for the sake that they put monkeys in jars in this capsule as well. They send these things out into space. Now, these space probes, from what I was hearing, can trap, they're billions and billions of miles away right now. They actually then left the, um, entered into the, Ellis, uh, 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 into the interstellar place in space, meaning outside the bubble. Now, just imagine that that object, after it done went as far as it can possibly go, and it's said to, to be tra traveling for millions and millions of years. Now, imagine that that, if what I'm stating is true, that space has a memory of the flight pattern of this object. And like a time capsule, the, the area that it traveled to, and that path that it traveled to, it must be returned back to the location from which it came from because of its metallic composition and its makeup. Well, you see people, I believe that space has this re a recycling type pattern that the composition of a planet, the materials of a planet, and anything sent from one given planet has this boomerang effect, meaning that if I threw this pencil into space and it traveled to, uh, into what, no matter where it traveled, because of its makeup, it must be remanded back to where it came from based on this cyclonation of materials that is in space and this this pencil will ultimately if i throw it into space if i have this uh, this amazing ability to shoot this pencil off into space because of its metallic i mean because of its makeup ultimately it will be returned back to where it came from I believe that the Roswell incident is best explained not as a UFO, because if it was a UFO, NASA would not have redacted its story. 
I believe that what happened is that NASA, and it makes sense if you think about it, that the Roswell incident, and here it is back up here again, that what happened is that these people, in identifying the Air Force as identifying this as being a UFO, realized that this was a friendly, a familiar object, meaning that they realized that the object came from space, I mean came from Earth. And it was something dealing with a time capsule of information that now had now returned to Earth and, and undetected by radar it came back into our world. And I believe that the foil stuff that they are talking about that was on this object was part of this object's landing gear that actually either went out and made wings so this object can can possibly safely like a glider glide into the earth or some type of balloon mechanism like they said it was a balloon that caused the object to float to the earth and even though it still crash landed but to actually soften its land and that's what the aluminum was now people there is no other logical explanation for all of that just imagine that what I'm stating is true, that this is in fact, this Roswell incident was a time machine, not a UFO. And these and the objects and the beings that they said that were in there were actually everything that is based on these, our ancestors had acquired the ability to leave our atmospheric layers of our world and send these objects off into space and then here we are, possibly thousands, maybe millions of years later. The preservation of all of these objects through a time capsule process, which we see going on today. The object was sent back into our world. It came back and crash landed. And we as humans didn't realize that it was our ancestors until, I mean, on, 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 on the first, I'm going to put more in writing, but on our first sight of this, we thought that it was a UFO because we did not recognize none of the, uh, none of the materials in there. But once NASA did their, started doing their scientific investigations of it all, they realized that it was something that came from our world and say, hey, listen, we better shut this up because it goes against religion. It goes against everything that mankind knows today. So let's let's just let them think that there's a cover up as opposed to there was other civilizations of people that have actually made of our world, which were our ancestors, that achieved faith space flight. And this would actually if we told people that, then it would erase all history. And that, people, is what explains Roswell. I'm going to put more in writing, but just think about it. That Roswell incident being a time capsule, and just like NASA is doing now with this deep space, with their deep space probes, they're putting everything in there. Uh, they're putting in records with with um, with, um, with James Brown on uh, in recordings. Um, I forget some of the other objects that they put in there. Just imagine. That that deep space probe right now that is billions and billions of light years away from Earth. Just imagine that this object returns back to our world after the existence of who we are today is wiped away. And other life forms and started back over in this cycle that I am suggesting takes place through an extinction and, 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 and resurrection of mankind's type of existences. So therefore, imagine this object colliding back with Earth that NASA, these deep space probes that NASA, NASA sent down and they're remanded back to our planet millions and millions of years later when life has started all over again. And mankind's likenesses similar to ours in intelligence obtain or acquire these objects. This, this, this golden record that NASA put inside of this, this deep space probe and these other objects, it will give them the ability to actually tap into a past which actually would revive the future that this object landed in. I'm going to end there, people. I hope you understand this video. I, I'm not scripted, so everything is unscripted with me. So I hope you understand. I'll put more in writing. Thank you. Than any have been given to date. And this is my consistent pattern 
of being able to do these types of um, these types of videos. Okay, now what do I believe happened there in um, um, in Roswell? Well, through my paranormal um, experience and encounter, I believe that what landed in Roswell. Okay, because it was confirmed that something was there. Even the even the United, um, United States Air Force states that something was there. So therefore, there was something there that came in, that flew in, and it crash landed. Okay, of course, um, the the Air Force redacted this story, but that's that's of no moment when once you hear my story, everything is going to come into place and make sense. I believe what crash landed in Roswell in New Mexico was not a identified well it was an identified flying object to most people but not to after i believe what it was to be totally honest was a time machine that's what i believe where do i get this from well when it crashed this object crashed it was unknown to u.s officials that went onto the site but after they did their um, upon first seeing this, they, 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 they looked at it as what it was, a UFO. But upon closer inspection, they realized that this was an object that came from our world, but from a different time. And this is why they redacted their story. Because had they would have had released their story, because if it was a UFO, they would rather have you known that it was a UFO when it came from somewhere else, than, um, and, 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 and to report on this story as they first did, than to... And why this UFO, um, which is actually was confirmed first by the United States Air Force and by eye account witnesses about these, about a flying type object, which was a UFO, um, and um, these aliens and what was possibly um, there. And I've been thinking about this over and over again for some time and all. And I believe that I will, I'm, what I'm about, about to disclose will be the probably the most compelling and most believable account of what actually occurred within Roswell. Hi, Jerome right here and once again you're joining hello everybody Jerome right here and once again you're joining me on my Jerome Wright channel here on YouTube. Alright um in this video I'm gonna be going ahead and um I'm gonna share through my paranormal experience and encounter my interpretation of what happened in the UFS UFO reported incident um with um, Roswell back in 1940. Um, I've been thinking about this over and over and over again and I have been given through my thoughts this image of what actually occurred in Roswell.